We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Salute Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Not going to complain. Not going to complain at all. Well, I do. I have a complaint. <laughs> the basketball team sucks right now, Jared. Kyle, as as discussed, as discussed in the uh, Sloopcast Discord, Sloopcast dot the nope, Discord dot the Sloopcast dot com. That's 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 what it is. Discord dot the Sloopcast dot com. Always be plugging. Ohio State always has been and always will be a women's synchronized swimming school, and we just have to accept that. It, it's just the facts. I don't know if I can get around that. It's literally the most <laughs> Zach's down. It's literally the most dominant program in all of college athletics. Just saying. Just saying. All right, Kyle. This is an Ask Sloopcast episode. I uh I challenged the uh the folks in the Discord. Uh I challenged the folks in the Discord uh to give us uh, big predictions, wild predictions um, for the, I'm just going to delete that one real quick, um, <laughs> for the uh, 2023 year. I, I said, hey, give us your wildest predictions. So uh, they populated our Ask Sloopcast channel on the Discord, which once again can be found at Discord.thesloopcast.com um, with wild predictions for the 2023 year. Uh, I told him football, football's good. Uh, Gangland's going to start us off with one uh, down in the live chat. Uh, I said, Ohio State football is good. Uh, Ohio State football is great. College football is good in general. But also throw us some a couple wild cards. So I think we have a couple wild cards in here. But for the most part, I think we stuck to football. All right. Uh, Gangland just threw one in the live chat. Kyle, what did he say? He has here, McCord leads the team in rushing touchdowns. No. Kyle, I, Kyle, <laughs> I have an idea. Let's let's rank these. All right. All right. I will. I'll pull up a notepad here. All right. Um. Now, we asked for wild predictions. So, let's say one equals safe. Like, it wasn't a wild prediction. Like, you didn't understand the assignment, right? And and 10 has basically no chance. It's so wild that it's not even realistic. But then again, like, we asked for wild predictions, right? So, it, it really has no chance of becoming true. That's 10. They went too far. One, they didn't go far enough. You really want to be hitting like a six, I think. I think six is the sweet spot. Okay. All right. So McCord leading the team in rushing touchdowns. Uh, that's a 10. <laughs> I'm not going to say that's a 10, um, but it's it's a it's a good eight and a half. How, how is that not a 10, Jared? You really think McCord is going to lead the team in rushing touchdowns with, with, with everything else with the offense that Ohio State has next year? No way. So, I'm just rushing, in, in a passing, it, rushing in a, in a weird scenario in which like Ohio State goes through a bunch of running backs again. Maybe not any one Ohio State running back gets a bunch of rushing touchdowns. Maybe Ryan Day remembers that the quarterback sneak is a possible play. Um, red zone option more. I doubt that. I I I I don't think he. I still don't think Ryan Day is going to leave his quarterback upright and running too often. Not by design anyway. But maybe quarterback sneaks. Maybe some rollouts. I don't know. Um, but I'm just I'm leaving some room, Kyle. It's the first. Honestly, the answer to your question, how is that not a ten? Is it's the first question, and I'm leaving some breathing room. Is is my honest answer. All right. All right. Uh, let us go down to the questions here. Uh, Lincoln. Um, Heinholtz. Heinholtz starts a playoff game for Ohio State. Okay. 
So Ohio State uh, bringing in freshman quarterback. He is presumably, oh, gangland with the good question. What year? Well, the, these are predictions for 2023. So, by the way, um, is there a playoff game or should I say an additional playoff game being played in 2023? When are the New Year's? When, when are the when are the uh, playoff games? Do they take place in December or January? Because this might be impossible. This might be a 10. This actually might be a 10. Kyle's looking that up. I um, am. We have a look it up, Kyle, look it up situation in play here. When is the first playoff game? Zach says December, but, you know, Zach throws some bad info in the chat every once in a while. Um, Like the December 31st games, they aren't always supposed to be on December 31st anymore. Do we, Have they been announced yet, Kyle? Rose Bowl and the All-State Sugar Bowl will be played Monday new year's day and so that's a 10 there's not a playoff game happening an, an additional playoff game happening nfl sunday on the 31st yep that's why yeah yep. the, the 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 rose bowl and all those bastards they're all about tradition until it comes to tv numbers and trying to counter program the nfl <laughs> Um, but take, but but saying but saying that uh, he didn't put a year here. We'll just say in general, Lincoln so starts a the, playoff the, game. The twenty twenty three season a playoff game for Ohio State. Uh, I'll give yeah. that like a seven though. A seven? Yeah. I, I yeah. okay. Ohio State started a third string quarterback in the playoffs before. I, uh, okay, okay, okay. Do we even know that he's the third string quarterback? Yep, yeah, that's true. Uh, they, the Ohio state has brought in a graduate transfer. Um, so, uh, he could be named the starter before game day. I, I, I don't, uh, he could be fourth behind, uh, buddy from Oregon state. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying, especially since uh, Lincoln is not green shirting. He is not spring enrolling. So that puts him, you know, even further behind the eight ball. Kyle McCord's in his first season starting. Um, he'll probably be getting a decent number of the practice snaps. Um, I, I I don't think I, I think they put in uh, and I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but the transfer from Oregon State before they put in Lincoln. Um, I'm giving this one a nine. All right. Why does right. it matter? Right. Devin Brown will be our quarterback. Well, there's there's Zach's prediction. Uh, I be be more specific. Be more specific. Give me a give me a solid with qualifiers prediction on that one, Zach. Devin Brown will be our QB one. He's he's typing. We, we're gonna no. get this prediction well, that, live. That's one of, that's one oh. of his questions here. Oh, it is. It is in the Brown, notes. Brown will be QB one after the spring game. Whew. Listen, I don't think so, but I also I'll, I'll, don't. I'll just, I'll just say a five. I'll say a five. I'm going to say a right six. I'm going to say a six. Okay. Um, Devin can run. By the way, so can McCord. I mean, not not as good as Stroud, but also does it matter? I don't think Ryan Day is going to change his tune on running quarterbacks. Brown is better than McCord. What do you base that on? You haven't mm -hmm. seen either of them play legitimate snaps in college football. His arm. Oh, boy, do you not know about... <laughs> okay, we'll see. Listen, you haven't seen either of them play, like, legitimate snaps in college football. We'll see. All right, Kyle, what's the next prediction, and who's it from? Uh, Zach with another one saying, Nomad will host Sloopcast with Stroud during... The wasteland. Oh, uh, so with Austin. That, that that's Austin's new tag. Oh, that's uh, Austin. Okay. Yeah, Austin changes his tag like every every uh every week. Um. Uh, ten. Ten. That that's a ten. I'm just just <laughs> letting you know right now. That's a ten. 
Listen, there Jared, will not be a Jared, Sloopcast episode without Kyle or I. One of us with a guest host? Maybe. Modcast? Right, Jared, Modcast isn't Jared, making it on the other side of the of the Patreon paywall. Gangland. Not happening. Jared says Jaden Davis commits to Ohio State. Oh, what a good one, Jared. That's me. <laughs> I, I, It's my prediction. I can't. Uh, <laughs> hi, Austin. Uh, uh, Kyle, I, I can't score this one. It's me. I can't score this one. It's me. Jaden Davis, um, he's getting three coaches to go visit him. And Jaden Davis has made a commitment uh, to uh, visit Ohio State on campus. He has been considered a Michigan lean but that's back when Ohio State had a 2024 quarterback in their class. Jaden Davis was a guy that Ohio State liked just as much. Just as much as the previous guy. So, Jaden Davis committing to Ohio State, Kyle. I can't score myself. You have to score it. I'll say an eight. An eight? I'll say an eight. You're high. I, I got a point five from Austin and a and a two from Zach. <laughs> of course, then, you really then, think he's coming to Ohio State? You really think? It's a it's a wild prediction. Okay, Austin showed up late. Austin, a a one is that's not that's not wild of course that's going to happen a 10 is no that prediction will never happen that's too wild so we're kind of grading it based off of the likeliness slash wildness of it so super super likely is a one super wild is a 10 a six yeah like a five six sevens like the sweet spot um Jaden davis I, I like yeah, sorry, go ahead, Kyle. You go ahead. I like this one from Nomad here. Big Ten will make either USC or UCLA a permanent rival in to Ohio State in football. Um, one of cut. Them? Yeah, that's that's like a one. I'll say a one. I, I think that's very very realistic. Uh, Kyle, we did last off season, which uh, maybe put this in the wasteland. Hey, can one of the mods put this in the wasteland. We should revisit this, maybe with an expanded Big Ten. Um, we should revisit this. Like, last offseason, um, we did a, what would an Ohio State pod system, what would an Ohio State schedule look like, what would a Big Ten schedule look like if the Big Ten moved away from divisions? And I believe in that episode, Kyle, we gave Ohio State and USC a recurring rivalry. If I remember correctly, we did that. We gave Ohio State uh, three protected games. We did a three protected game system and we gave Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State and USC, if I'm remembering correctly, which I, I may not be, but I think that's what we did. As the lore master, I don't remember that being a thing, uh, but I also just don't remember. Some lore master you are. Austin, you always disappoint me. Um, the <laughs> I, I, I had to give the I'm not being serious chuckle at the end there. Uh, what would you rank uh, I won't say it's a one. I won't say that's not a wild... I. One says it's like obvious, right? Too obvious. So I'm going to give it like a, a three. I'm going to say that's pretty likely. I think that's like a pretty likely. But I don't think it's a guarantee. Like a one is almost a guarantee. No mad here. Cincinnati will go two and seven in Big 12 football in 2023. Um... Let's let's look at their schedule real quick. Fuck it. Let's get let's pull up the schedule. Oh, Austin, 
What does sugma mean? Uh, I don't know what sugma means. Sugma my balls? Oh no, I fell for it. Damn. How did I fall for that? <laughs> oh, Austin. Uh, Kyle's pulling up that schedule. Uh, do you have? <laughs> uh, there's only there's only three known games. Oh, that's gonna make this difficult. All right, so doesn't let's just. Big Twelve play. Doesn't Big Twelve play each other? Uh, well, they oh, no. they well, it's gonna change. They used to. They added more teams than they lost. And by the way, they still haven't lost Texas or Oklahoma yet. So Texas and Oklahoma are still in the division. Anyway, so we're, we're just going to have to go into this one blind, Kyle. Two and seven for Cincinnati. No Luke Fickle, three, tougher competition. Their three known games is Eastern Kentucky, Pittsburgh, and Miami of Ohio are their first three games of the year. Now, but he does say. Yes, those are out of conference. Yes. Oh, we'll go two and seven in Big 12. Yeah, there you I go. Gotcha. There you go. Okay. So we, we have to do this blind. Um, two and seven inside the big, inside the big 12. I'm going to say over, and it's not an over under, but, uh, two and seven feels a bit uh, it says too tough football schedule. It's going to be released at the end of January. We're about 10 days too early for that one, Kyle. Um, yeah, they, they've lost a lot of talent over the last two years. They don't have Luke fickle anymore. But, like, I feel like they can win three, right? I feel like they can win three. Uh, regardless, I think I'm going to put this one at about a five and a half, six. Yeah, I was thinking of five. Yeah. It's tough, though, Jared. The Big 12 was very competitive this year. They absolutely were. Although Cincinnati may have a top three Big 12 defense next year. They might. They, they very well could. Um, let's see. Next one here, we have um, Holly Sal. He says here, for 2023, Mich Michigan will will finish 9-3. and three. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this one a low... Uh, I'm going to, yeah, this is bold. Um, I'm going to say this yeah. is like an eight. Listen, I've been talking shit on Michigan and what they were going to be in 2023, but three of their offensive linemen who everyone was expecting to hit the portal, I kept saying, well, they're going to lose their entire offensive line. They're going to take a step back next year. They're going to lose their entire, I kept saying it. Well, I don't know if I said it on the show. I know that I said it in the Discord a thousand times. Excuse me, yes, the portal. Or excuse me, the draft, yes. Thank you, Gangland. The the draft, not the portal. Um, three of their offensive linemen who everyone was expecting to hit the draft didn't. Blake Corum, everyone, everyone's going to focus on Blake Corum coming back when they didn't expect him to. I like, Donovan Ed I like Donovan Edwards more. The real story is those three offensive linemen deciding to come back. Mm-hmm. When they could have gone pro, they were good enough to go pro and didn't. Um, I think that says, God, I'm going to say nice things about Michigan. Lord help me. Um, that says a lot about their culture. It says a lot about the, that says a lot about what's happening in their locker room. And it says a lot about what they think they can accomplish next year. It's be scared of Michigan next year. I'll say it. Be scared of Michigan next year. So I am going to, uh, Kyle needs to step away for a moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this prediction is very bold. Um, and therefore I'm going to give it an eight, eight and a half. Um, Nomad says, and this is a good one to do while Kyle is gone. BattleBots will beat the Big 12 in total number of viewers this upcoming football season. Um, no. Uh, th this is this is like a nine. Um, I'm going to tell you why. One, 
total number of viewers uh, was, was bad wording on your part. Uh, you should have said total number of average viewers because BattleBots is going to run like what? One episode a week, one new episode a week, right? Um, meanwhile, the Big 12 is going to put out a ton of football games. So total number of viewers is going to be a lot. If you just said like per game, that could have gotten us closer, but still not even then because Texas and Oklahoma don't leave until uh, their first season in the SEC is is 2025. Uh, could that change? Could lawyers get involved? Could they leave earlier? Maybe. But what we know right now, and by the way, even if they do, I think it would be one year earlier, not two years earlier, which is what it would have to be for 2023 to happen. So, um, no, man, I'm going to give you a nine on this one. Yep, I give a nine as well. All right, Buckeye Esquire. Uh, Buckeye Esquire has here, Ohio State will have three 1,000-yard wide receivers and a 1,200-yard rusher. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. Especially from a team whose offensive line is a big question mark going into the season, which it is. Ohio State loses both of their offensive tackles and their center. The left guard could move out the left tackle. So you're in a position. And by the way, the right guard might move to center. You could have five new players in, well, three new players, but five players in different positions along the offensive line next year. Um, And I would have maybe given you a, a slightly less bold score. Um, if you had th- if you had said three receivers or three pass catchers, um, not that I think it's a huge chance that a tight end gets a uh, thousand yards receiving, but I think it would have at least opened up the possibility. Um, Ohio State's going to return all three of their wide receivers. They're going to add even more talented wide receivers, which actually could like spread out the, uh, you know, spread out the catches a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a hard time seeing the rushers. I just, with the offensive line being such a question mark, I, I got to give this one like a, like an eight. Yeah. I, I gave a nine. That's, that's very, <laughs> That's very hard. That's very that is, hard to, especially yeah, yeah, yeah. especially if you have multiple running backs. Yeah, that I don't think it's happening. All right, Nomad with another question. Uh, Ohio State goes undefeated in the Big Ten East and drops a game in the Big Ten West opponent. Who's Ohio State play cross division next year, Kyle? Uh, they have. Purdue at okay. Purdue. Okay. We don't know the time at yet. Mich- excuse me. At Wisconsin and home to Minnesota. Ooh. That that Wisconsin game is suddenly a lot more interesting, isn't it? That is now. <laughs> so we have two components to this. Undefeated is it a night game? We don't know yet. No, we don't have we don't about the only thing and is I don't even think it, this has been officially no, I in fact the guarantee this hasn't been officially declared yet about the only thing I'd be willing to put any money on for sure is that Ohio State Michigan will be at noon yes. that that that'll be Fox's first choice they'll get it they'll stick it in the noon slot done so but yep. we have two components yep, yep. to this not only does Ohio State uh have to lose one game to the Big 10 West but they also go undefeated in the Big Ten East, which, as I was saying, Michigan's going to be really good next year. Um, yeah, so I, w- I would give this one probably, probably say a, a five, honestly. I, I no, would I'm, say I would say a five. I'm doing like a seven and a half. I don't think this is super likely. I I think I I believe that if Ohio State. 
let's let's theoretically say Ohio State loses two games in the regular season next year. Just just theoretically. Kyle, sidebar. Ohio State loses two games next year. Who are they to? <sighs> chat, chat as well. If if Ohio if like you have to pick two losses for Ohio State next year, who are they? Two losses. I'm going to go regular go season at Notre Dame. Mhm. And say it. I know you don't want to, but it's the truth. I'll, I'll say at Purdue. Really? Yeah, Gangland's giving the correct answer. The the non-homer answer, I think. It's Michigan and Notre Dame. Those are the two most likely losses on the schedule. Neither of them fall into the scenario Nomad puts forth here. Uh, one of the West Road trips and in, in Michigan is what Spike says. Still doesn't fit Nomad's prediction. By the way, like... We can we let the the West Road? Well, I don't know, maybe not because the Northwestern game was a disaster this year. Even if Ohio State did up did end up winning it, so I don't know. Is are we still holding on to the big the Big Ten West road trip curse? We have it. It's it's officially been a while since Purdue. I know it was back to back. It was Iowa and Purdue. It's officially been a while since Purdue. But to then argue against myself, the Northwestern game this year was pretty fucking ugly. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the Big Ten West here, Austin has here, Fick will have Wisconsin go 11 and one and play into the Big Ten title game. Uh, Gangland says those were urban losses in not bad conditions. That's those are that's a valid point. Um, sorry, Kyle, which one did you read? Fick will have Wisconsin go 11 and one and onto the Big Ten title game. All right. Do we have a Wisconsin schedule? We oh, already DJ. know that they have to play Ohio State um, oh. at home. At home. Okay. Out of conference is Buffalo, Washington State, and Georgia okay. Southern. All very winnable. Mm -hmm. And then their cross Purdue is Ohio State, oh, Indiana, okay. and Rutgers. Uh, so we could easily predict a loss there. I think like going by Vegas, we can predict a loss there. Um, and then obviously there's Purdue, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Northwestern, Nebraska, Minnesota. Um, Wisconsin has been busy in the transfer portal. Purdue is less scary without Brom. Yeah. I agree 100% gangland. Uh, do they lose to a zoo again? I don't think so. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give this, honestly, I'm going to give this like a, like a four, like a three, four. I, I really think uh, fix definitely the, the real deal there. They have a very favorable schedule here. They don't, they only play Ohio state. They don't play a combination of Penn state and, on uh, Michigan, I, yeah, I, I can see Wisconsin go eleven and one, ten and two, somewhere around there. Sure. Um, my my biggest concern is just the lack of. It's just the lack of breathing room in this prediction. Like. You can only lose once. And that's that's a lot to ask Fickle in year one. I, I just think that's a lot. Um, they, they are bringing in a ton of guys through the transfer portal. Um, no, most notably C.J. Williams from USC. Uh, very talented wide receiver. Um, we'll see... Uh, they, 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 they do bring in uh, Tanner Mordecai from SMU to play quarterback in exchange for Graham Mertz. Um, I don't know enough about Mordecai to ask if that's a Wisconsin passing attack or not gangland, if I'm being honest. Um, they've been busy in the portal. Um, so we'll see. But I don't know. Wisconsin wasn't very good this year. Um, they also lost some guys to the portal. 
I do think I do think Fick will have them playing much better, but eleven and one just doesn't leave a lot of breathing room. Uh, I'm gonna say, but it, but again, as far as it being like a good wild prediction, I think it's a great wild prediction because I think it's like a seven, which I think is like right in the sweet spot of where a good wild prediction should be. Okay. All right, Austin with another question here: National title that will not have an SEC school. National champion ship. Oh, the national championship will not have an SEC school. I, I misheard you, Kyle. That's that's way more interesting. Way more interesting. National championship will not have an SEC school. That that's like an eight. Bama yeah, always has talent. Georgia uh, I know he's going to lose a lot of talent, but they've been recruiting better than anyone else in the country, except maybe Bama, but also maybe including Bama. Um, they'll still have talent. Yeah. How many, how um, many times has there not been an SEC school in the national title? How many times? In the CFB era? In, yep. In or the, the CFP, CFP era. era. CFP era, excuse yep. me. Yes. I think Bama is how on the decline. Times? I don't know. I don't know if Bama's on the decline or if Georgia is just better at this point. Um, but we'll see. Uh, is it just Ohio State versus Oregon? It's is... just Ohio State and Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I. I. Yeah. I think it's a nine because I mean you got Alabama, you got Georgia, LSU's on the incline as well. I like. Mm, like any Brian Kelly team, I think that. I think that there's a, a limited ceiling on any Brian Kelly team. There's a limited ceiling. I don't think they're making the playoffs with Brian Kelly. I'll say it. I'll say it. Brian Kelly right. will be fantastic at getting them to only lose one or two games in the sec West or excuse me in the regular season. Uh, but I think that's about the cap. Why do we see another one from Austin? Uh, hi, Austin. Uh, wide receiver or running back wins the Heisman, even with all the talent at quarterbacks. Uh, that's hmm. that's also like an eight. That's like an eight. There's you you have to have someone who's who's so stellar. Like Marv just goes nuts. Has like thirteen hundred yards, twenty touchdowns for the year. Well, or something nuts. Let let me let me counter that, Kyle. Um. Marvin, we have to remember Heisman voting is stupid. Can can we all just remember for a second that Heisman voting is incredibly stupid? It is. His name is Marvin Harrison. His name is Marvin Harrison. He's the son of one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play in the NFL. I mean, that's... And voters are good, stupid. Good also makes a good point here. Yes, the... um. Marv could have a Devonta Devonte season because Mar Marv's already known by the media, so the media will give him that little bit of um, acknowledgement already. So as long as he performs well, maybe, maybe. Uh, Zach asks, "When is Austin hosting with Kyle?" <laughs> hey, that's up to them. Maybe I'll see if I can't take. I've this is why I've been forcing Kyle to do some sloop cats only without me, so that he learns the process a bit more. I did a couple. Yeah, you have. Uh, All right, what, what, what's your what's your ranking for this one, Jared? I, I said an eight. Oh, um, I think it's better than that because I think uh, Marvin Harrison has a chance. I think Blake Corum has a chance. Um, it is. First and foremost, a quarterback award, but wide receivers get it sometimes. Um, running backs get it at least somewhat frequently. Uh, I'm going to say like an eight, maybe a seven and a half. Seven and a half. I'm getting seven and a half. All right. Uh, USC loses four one possession games next year. Woo. All right. Um, they should play a pretty tough schedule. They're going to play Oregon, who's going to be pretty decent. 
They're going to play Washington, who's pretty decent. They're going to play. I mean, you know, these are all losable games. Donovan Edwards wins the Heisman? Probably not. I think they're going to give most of the carries to to Blake Corum. Um, they're going to play Notre Dame, who's pretty decent. Oregon, who's pretty oh. decent. They they just announced. They just announced. Uh, I think today, Jared. Pac-12 came out with their schedule. Okay. So they play San Jose State in Nevada, mm -hmm. as well as Notre Dame for their out of conference. Yeah. Uh, let's see some other notables. Uh, at Oregon, home to UCLA, home to Washington. Uh, home to Arizona, home to Stanford, at Cal, and at Notre Dame. Um, USC losses Utah, Washington, Oregon, and Notre Dame all by one score. Yeah, I mean, I can I can see that. I, I'll, I'll give this one a four. I, I'll give this one a four. It definitely, definitely not. I don't. I think. I think it's it's possible too. I mean, we've seen it's totally possible. Who's, who's, their, who's their defense coordinator? Who's their defense coordinator, Jared? Oh, I, I was gonna say that myself, except you beat me to it. <laughs> I'm with you. My only issue with this is how specific it is. Like, like if this was an actual prop bet, you'd be a fool to take it because of how many, just because of how specific it is. It has to be four losses by one possession games. You know what I mean? Like, it's just very, very specific. The likelihood of that happening and meeting two requirements four times. Well, what this one very specific requirement four times in a single season. It's just not super likely, right? Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like a an eight. I think the spirit behind it is pretty likely. I think the spirit behind this prediction is very likely, but I think the specificity of it is not super likely. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I uh, this is okay. this is correct. This is somewhat likely in spirit, but mathematically. It's going to be really tough to hit. Mm -hmm. I'm still sticking with a four. Okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. Nomad here. Uh, I can't answer this because I have no idea what the hell this is. Uh, Vince sells WWE to the Saudis and they immediately bring back the Sheik. The Sheik is a very old man. Now, it could be like a rebooted Sheik, right? Like it's, it's, it's Sheik Jr., so let's let's be generous here and say it's Sheik Jr. Okay. Um he's a wrestler from like the 80s early 90s. Um He said the not an. I know, but I'm trying to make content here, okay? Uh we have a bonus prediction from Chop Daddy down in the uh notes there. I'm trying to be as generous as possible because, like, there's a decent chance by the time that WWE gets sold, the Sheik won't even... Like, it's a miracle the Sheik's still alive. Let's just be honest. He's an old man bring who was... The Sheik. I understand, but, okay, it's WWE. They could bring back a Sheik and still call him The Sheik. Like, his nickname could still be The Sheik. Because that's just, it's the WWE. Yes, lies. That's that's how it works. So we, we have two things here. Um, I, I think Kyle's, Kyle's apparently going to slap me on the butt. Um, bring back the Sheik. So I I think if we change that, so like a, a Sheik, Vince selling to the Sa Saudis is not a ridiculous outcome. The Saudis are trying to like sport wash themselves, whether it be through golf or other means. I won't go. I'm not going to get into all of it, but it it the and the Saudis and the WWE already have a relationship. That part of it, if I focus specifically on that part of it, it's like a five. 
It's like right in the middle. I still think it ends up being something like Fox. I, I, I think Fox buys the WWE. That would be, if you make me guess, that. that's my guess. And if it's not yeah. Fox, Fox doesn't want it. Maybe they do. They can say they don't. Maybe they do. What they say publicly and what they say privately aren't the same thing. They've lost like 20 mil on it this year. Right, but do they look at it and say, but we can do it better? They might look at it and say, yeah, but if we controlled it. Um, it had been a bad investment for them. NBC, if anyone would buy it. NBC also makes sense because they already bought out all of the digital rights and put it on Peacock. Um, so that makes sense as well. Obviously, um, Austin's probably right. NBC probably is more likely. Uh, so yeah, but SNL and WWE being on the same channel is wild to you. I'm old enough to remember that professional wrestling was a Saturday morning activity. That's, I'm that old. You watch wrestling on Saturday mornings. Anyway, um, we have, so we, you have two factors here. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say like a, I'm gonna say an eight. I'm gonna say an eight. Yeah. Kyle, are you opting out of this one? If it's the chic 10, I, <laughs> I'm just going to go off of it. What everybody else says. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, Austin asks, or Austin says, Austin predicts, uh, Florida state will make the college football playoff. That's a bold one. Give credit where credit's due. That's a bold one. They got guys. Don't say no shot. Say the line, Jared, the ACC sucks. The ACC sucks. Clemson's not any good anymore. They keep getting worse. Maybe they fired their offensive coordinator. Uh, Uwe Angelale hit the transfer portal. He went somewhere out west. I don't remember. Um, when but was Clemson God, good? The schedule sucks, Jared. Was it Oregon State? Really? That's the best he could do was Oregon State? Yeah, he went to Oregon State. Yep. God. I think college football was down. Um, I mean, yeah, they were good with Trevor when Trevor Lawrence was there. And for uh, several quarterbacks before that, they were very good, obviously. Um, you know, they were. Don't. Don't 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 be yeah. a fan and Clemson, shape things. Clemson has a very Clemson has a very favorable schedule. I mean, they play. They play well, God, we're Dame. talking about Florida State here. Oh, you're, well, you're talking about Clemson. I, okay. I'm just saying okay. I'm saying the ACC is open. Because Clemson is bad, the floor the door is open for Florida State to run the ACC. All right. Was my point. So to start the Deshaun, season, it's Deshaun State Watson State. was obviously very good. Zach, you're you're being silly. Florida State plays LSU the first game. So okay. We'll find out right then and there. That'll make it tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, there's there's start of the season's tough. I mean, they play LSU, then they get. Southern Miss and then North Alabama, and then they play Florida, and then they play they always Boston play Florida. College. Then they play Boston College, and then at Clemson. They they, they got that's a that's a tough, tough that's a tough start schedule. Of, start of the season there. Uh, Florida State oh, oh, got the mind. best never transfer they, portal they, class they, too. They mixed up the dates there. I apologize. Sorry. They, Florida's at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. Never mind. They they haven't decided the who who they're playing when, but okay. But still, that's that's a tough that's a tough schedule. For Florida he said, State. Uh, Austin says Florida State got the best transfer portal class too. They will return most of their team, including their quarterback, who was one of the highest graded PFF players of the year. PFF is taken with a grain of salt. Uh, they got Fentrell Cypress. They got Jordan Traveler. I I get it. I get it, Austin. I'm I'm not the one trashing this. 
I'm I'm trying to make a case for this. Um, making the playoffs is very tough, so I'm not going to give it like a a super low score. Um, but I think it's like a five and a half six, which make again that's like right in the sweet spot of it being like a good bold prediction. I think it's really really hard to predict anyone making the playoffs aside from Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Bama. That's about it. Like, those are the four safe predictions to make the playoffs. Maybe Clemson, but maybe not. Um, those are, th- That's it. Those are the only safe predictions to make the playoffs. You go outside of that, emphasis on the maybe not. Yeah. I was trying to decide whether I wanted to say it or not. Um, but, but the point is like, that's that, those are the only safe predictions, but if you're going to go outside of those four, yeah, I think Florida state is like in that next tier. If we were doing a tier list right now, I wouldn't put them in S, but I might put them in a, yeah, I'll, I'll put, I'll, I'll rank this one like a five. I, I think, I think they have, they have some players in place here and, they get if they get going, yeah. They I, th- I think they have a shot here. So yeah, I'll, I'll say a five. Like we've seen this transfer transfer portal play, which is a difficult thing to say when you've had a bourbon and coke. Um, this transfer portal play, we've seen it work and not work in college football. We've seen like the winner, the quote unquote winner of the transfer portal. We've seen that work, and we've seen that not work. Every time we think it's going to work, it, it works like 50% of the time. We'll see. Um, but I'm just a little bit hesitant to be like, look at all the guys they got in the portal. Playoff prediction for next year. Georgia, Michigan, USC, FSU. I wish I could disagree with that, but that seems like a pretty solid prediction, if I'm being honest. Although you also did predict that USC was going to lose four games. So you're kind of <laughs> been a little wishy-washy there, Austin. You're a bold prediction. <laughs> All right. Um, Chop Daddy asks, wild prediction. Brian Hartline will be a coordinator of the offense. See, that's why we have the one. That is why we have the one. <laughs> You know, I didn't read it when he put it in the notes. I just saw that he put one in the notes. But Kyle, you're the one that copied and pasted it into the notes. I'm going to blame you for including this in the notes. This is your fault. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Kyle, that's the end of our that's the end of our bold predictions. Um, so if anyone wants to get like a bonus one into the uh, live chat real quick, that would be great. But I think, uh, Kyle was about to say something. Oh, no, I was just going to say the, the boldest ones here. So I'm going to go ones that are like a oh, okay. eight or recap eight, nine or 10. Yeah. So it would be McCord leads the team in rushing touchdowns. Not super likely. Uh, kind Holtz starts a playoff game. Impossible. Technically. No, Nomad hosts host Swoopcast with Austin during the week. Never happening. <laughs> That's a 12. Uh, Jaden Davis commits to Ohio State. That that does not belong. I'm, I will eight, honestly. Eight, I, will, eight, I will. What did I say? Oh, that's right. I didn't get the vote. That's yeah. a three, Spike says. Kyle, that's a five. Oh, I say it has a. We'll right. say six. All right, all right. Moving, moving on here. Um, Michigan will finish. Thank you, Spikes. Three. Yeah, that's not super likely. I think they're back in the playoffs next year. Battlebots beats the Big Twelve in total number of viewers. Talk to me uh, in twenty twenty five. Talk to me and talk. Talk to me in twenty twenty five on that one. Ohio State or Ohio State has three one thousand yard receivers and a one in a twelve hundred yard rusher. It's just. That's too tough. That's too uh, tough. National championship game will not have an SEC school. Um, Vince sells WWE to the Saudis. And 
brings back the Iron Sheik. Yes. Not happening. Yeah. And right on that and right on that cusp there, I had an eight, you had a seven though, Jared. Was it a wide receiver or running back wins the Heisman? Yeah, it's just it's just tough. It's tough for a non quarterback to win it. It's possible. Especially, like the running back is the second most likely. And the wide yep. receiver is probably the third most likely, but man, it's a real steep drop off after each one of those. Yeah. But that's it. That is it, Jared. All right, that's the end of the episode. Um, everyone, uh, make sure to check out the mothership over at BuckeyeHuddle.com where you find the best insider stuff in all the Ohio State sphere. Um, Kyle just dropped all the notes in there. Oh, uh, Jared. Nope, not reading that one, Zach. Um, <laughs> not reading that one. Um, by the way, oh, uh, before I do all the, before I do all the notes, before I do all the notes, uh, question for the YouTube chat question for the YouTube chat. We like to initiate a question for the YouTube chat. Um, who gets the block O in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, in 2023, who gets the block O in 2023? That's that's your mission, YouTube chat. No, I see all of you starting to type. It's for YouTube. No, stop. It's for YouTube. It's not for the Discord. It's for YouTube. Stop it. <laughs> or go ahead. I don't care. Uh, Zach says Steel Chambers. Uh, so, yeah, you you too can listen to X is also a good prediction, Spikes. Um, you two can uh, listen to us live and react to us live and piss me off the way all these uh, clowns tend to do. And uh, join the Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, most of the Discord server is free, but but uh, if you want to join the live interaction, the live interaction like we do here, like you see everyone talking down here, that that is behind that section of the Discord is behind the paywall. Uh, but it's only three dollars a month. You can pay for all twelve months, or you can pay for twelve months up front. Uh, and you get like an additional, like, I think it's like a 12% discount on that. So it goes down from $3 a month to $32 or $32.50 for an entire year. Um, we pay money to mess with you. I know. Pay it, dude. $3. Don't be a loser. Yeah. And by the way, even if, even if uh, you'd be a loser, but join us so you're at least be a cool loser. Well said. Well said. Um, if you're like, Jared, I don't care about listening live. And Jared, I don't care about a Discord server. Is. I don't even know what a Discord server is. Um, I, don't need, I don't need access to early episodes. I'll just listen to them the next day. It's fine. Um, Jared, I don't care about the Spreaker commercials. They're, they only play a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end, and a little bit in the middle. I don't care about that avoiding those ads and Jared, I don't, I don't care. You already put out a bunch of episodes. I don't care about the mysterious paywalled episode over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. I already have enough podcasts to listen to. I don't need the extra bonus episode. If, if, if that's how you feel, maybe do it just cause you listen to us and you like us and $3 a month is seriously the cheapest form of entertainment. Anyone has offered to you in the last 10 years like Disney plus is like four times that and guys support your local podcast. Thank you spikes. There you go. And listen, Disney plus charges like four times as us and they're only like twice as good. So it's really like a 50% savings over Disney plus fuck the Mandalorian. No, 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 no. I love the Mandalorian. Please don't fight. I love, I love the man. Disney take all of my money, please. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I backed off of it immediately. Spikes. I backed off of it immediately. I couldn't even finish the sentence. All right. That's it. That's all the plugs I have. Kyle, uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, I don't want to talk about the team cause they've, they've, they suck. Sucking it up five straight. Every losses. Holtman team falls women. apart they're in January for some they're reason. They're undefeated. They're undefeated, Jared. They're nine. They're at, they are eighteen and zero right now. Nineteen? Eighteen? Did they just win? I don't remember. They're either eighteen or nineteen and zero right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kyle. This is this is a women's basketball school. Uh, second 
and foremost. First and foremost, women's synchronized swimming. Second and mm-hmm. foremost, women's basketball. I want your I want your gut I want your I want your first reaction on this, Jared, because it yeah. just just so happened just happened recently. We have a a top five recruit um, flip his recruitment. The the top corner, okay, out of Florida has flipped from Miami to Colorado. You know. If you're a coroner, I kind of get it. Um, I don't know. So it's that's such that's, a... that's two straight number one recruited corners for Dion that will be on the Colorado defense for the 2022 class and the 2023 class. I I don't like. Is he going to play wide receiver? Yeah, he's, he's listed Maybe he'll as a play both. Maybe. Maybe he'll play both. Um, he played both at JSU. Yeah, but Colorado is not JSU. But yeah, we'll see what he does at Colorado. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all I got, Jared. Okay. Um, I don't. I kind of don't like Deion Sanders for the same reason that I don't like. Um, oh God, why is his name escaping me? Uh, the, the head coach at Minnesota, Mr. Row the boat, um, Fleck. Thank you, Austin. TJ Fleck. They both feel like so self promo machines. Like they're, they're most interested in bringing credit and attention to themselves. Who doesn't like Fleck? Me. I don't like Fleck. They're there's they're 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 promotion horse. I'll say it. Uh I don't like them. I, I think that they're in it like everyone's kinda in it for themselves, I get it. But I think like most coaches who are in it for themselves want that success via the football team. Like Nick Saban in it for himself. But his success is the football team's success. Right. I think that Deion Sanders and PJ Fleck couldn't give a shit as long as they look good in the end. That's that. That's my take on both of those individuals. All right. Um, that's it. Kyle's corner's done. I said my bit at the end. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. On Monday, we played the Dopamines, a punk band out of the Cincinnati area. We will be doing that again. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. The Dopamines. Dopamines. <laughs>